You see me chugging protein supplement shakes in some of my videos. What's it for? Well, some of us can get enough protein in our regular diets, whether we are vegan or omnivorous or plant-based or meat-based, some of us can get enough protein. What's enough protein? Opinions vary. My personal trainer here tells me to take about one gram of pure protein for every kilogram of my body weight. Per day. American bodybuilders are recommending one and a half to two. I'm not really on a bodybuilding nutrition scheme, I'm more on a maintenance and best body scheme. Even packing in one gram per kilogram of body weight is pretty difficult with my current diet. Now, for example, if I go out for a tonkatsu, breaded pork cutlets, a normal portion is going to be 80, maybe 90 grams of a cutlet weight before cooking. What percentage of that is going to end up actually being protein? Well, it's going to be less than a third, so I'm at best getting 30 grams of protein out of that meal. And that's my biggest protein loaded meal of the day. My breakfasts are now pretty healthy. I have about 100 grams of rice. I have 50 to 100 grams of some type of protein. Usually it's animal based, like a fish or some sausage or something. Occasionally it'll be tofu. I also usually have some mushroom. It's a Japanese style breakfast. That adds up to maybe 10 or 15 grams of pure protein. And most days I don't eat lunch. If I do eat anything in the middle of the day, it's going to be an onigiri, which will have usually some type of protein source in it. Let's say that gives me 10 grams. Did I lose track? Uh, no, breakfast is 15 grams or so, then I get another 10 grams in the middle of the day, so we're up to 25-ish, then I get 30 in my biggest meal of the day, so I may be getting 55 grams of protein. Now that's not enough even for the rel relatively conservative requirements that my personal trainer gives me. Solution? Pack in some pure protein with a supplement. At first I was really scared to do this. Can't I get everything from food? But when I ran the numbers, I found that I couldn't. Choosing a supplement was kind of difficult. I have previously worked with this, DNS Stoic. That is a whey protein powder. It's 97% pure protein, so it is a protein isolate. Very effective, 
tasteless. Uh, you mix this with water and it ends up tasting like the worst possible skim milk. It is a milk product. For those of you who are vegan, not for you obviously, you know that. For those of you who aren't and maybe care a little bit, there is a dairy industry involved in this. I love animals. I do eat animals. Uh, if you're wondering if I'm at all conflicted about that, yes I am. I'm working on it. An alternative to that with a lower environmental impact is pure soy protein. That's what I get in this mix, which I've just recently switched to. It's only about 87% pure, meaning I get a bit more carbohydrate, I get a little bit more fat, but the protein content is there. And as far as I understand, for your body, protein is protein. Now some guys are wondering, am I going to get gynecomastia from soy protein? Because I heard there's estrogen in it. That's plant estrogen. You're not a plant. So you're probably not going to develop bitch tits. A lot of Japanese guys eat a lot of tofu, and I see a lot less bitch tits here than I did in Canada. So I'm going to mix myself up a shake of this. Hopefully it's going to work on some protein synthesis because I have worked my muscles to exhaustion in my workout already today. The smell and actually from recollection the taste of papier-mâché glue comes to mind. Unlike the prevailing opinion, I'm not a huge fan of The Force Awakens, Star Wars Episode 7, but I'll tell you one thing I really do appreciate about Kylo Ren. It's a gesture in the middle of a lightsaber fight. That's where he got hit with a bowcaster bolt from Chewbacca. What the heck is he doing? That should be a source of tremendous pain. He's using his pain. He knows what point on his body is going to trigger the most pain. That pain generates a response. The response is adrenaline, it's action, it is anger, it is survival. Sometimes that's necessary. If you're doing muscle training, you know that response and you use that response. If you deal with chronic pain like I have, you use that response. In my early days here, dealing with both terrible neck pain and plantar fasciitis, I used the latter to fight the former. Because every step I took really hurt the bottoms of my feet, but if I just spent the time lying in bed, my neck would kill me, I decided, okay, I will use the endorphin response from each agonizing step to ameliorate the pain in my neck. And you know, it worked. I kind of felt drunk walking around long distance for the first little while, because again, that pain response from my feet generated an endorphin release natural opiates in the brain that help your body fight against pain. It was effective. And for those first three months, I did no other exercise. I just walked and with dietary restrictions, not total fasting, just restriction, I lost 10 kilograms off my overweight body. It wasn't until I developed a proper exercise plan and nutrition plan starting last January that I really started to get into better shape and better health and you know what? In better shape and better health, I do deal with all of that pain a lot better lately. 